Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Savannah, and today I'm going to be answering some commonly asked questions about grooming aggressive dogs. Okay, so I don't usually just sit on the floor in my work clothes, but today I have a break in my day, a little bit of a lunch break. I've been encouraging myself to either take a lunch break or get off a bit earlier now that I'm pregnant and it's a lot harder to get through my day. So I figured I would film this video quick for you guys on my lunch break of a question I received on Instagram. I've got some notes in front of me to make sure I include everything I want to in this video. So if I'm looking down, that would be why. But Natalie sent me a DM on Instagram. She sent me a message asking about becoming a groomer and being concerned about getting bit by a dog and becoming injured. Now this is a very common concern among people that are considering becoming a groomer and they're unsure if the career is a right fit for them and some of the risks that go along with it. So I got Natalie's permission to actually read the DM that she sent me and then I'm gonna go through it and answer her question. So Natalie says, Hi, I just found your channel and I'm currently binge watching all of your dog grooming videos. This is something I'm seriously considering. <clears throat> I have been to college and university to do animal care slash animal management. I also currently work in a dog rehoming center, but for some reason I am worried about taking the plunge to dog grooming at the thought of being seriously injured from a dog bite. Please, would you be able to make a video on how you deal with aggressive slash difficult dogs and what you do differently slash how to handle them? It would be super helpful. How common is it that dog bites happen? I think I can read the body language, but what do you do if you notice that body language? Do you just stop? Do you have to tell the owner you can't groom them? Do you muzzle them? I would love a video on this, or if not, could you please reply to my message? I would be so grateful, thank you. Then she says, also how have you found is the most effective way of advertising and promoting yourself? So first of all, I already replied to Natalie, but once again, thank you so much for watching my videos and sending in your question. And thank you to everybody watching this video right now. now first of all, I absolutely love that she works for a dog rehoming center because I've got two rescues and I'm all about rescuing pups. So good for you, Natalie. Let's jump in to Natalie's first question, which is how to, how to deal with aggressive slash difficult dogs. I get this question a lot from people who either want to become groomers or just the general public who are curious about my job. If you don't know anything about grooming at all, I would say most dogs are usually pretty good. You would be surprised, especially if the dog is introduced to grooming early in its life as a puppy and they have a positive experience with it. But there definitely are dogs that are aggressive and don't like the grooming process. Now I would say for the most part, the dogs that I groom that are aggressive or are even just not necessarily aggressive, but a little bit difficult, it's usually only for certain parts of the groom. So maybe they really don't like getting their head dried or they don't like getting their nails clipped. That is a very common one among dogs. Most dogs do not like getting their nails clipped. So first of all, how I would handle one of those situations, if they are not like full on aggressive and they just don't like getting their nails trimmed, I will try to leave those things until the very end. I find if I do the thing that they don't like at the beginning or even in the middle of the groom, it could throw off the whole energy of the rest of the groom, put them in a panic or just in a different state of mind that they don't need to be in. So whenever possible, I try to save that thing they don't like until the very end because then once I'm done it, they just get to leave my van and go home. Now to speak on energy, everything in the dog world is energy. That is so important, especially when it comes to grooming. It's important to have a calm and gentle demeanor with these dogs, even if they are fighting back. This doesn't mean that you can't still be stern with them. Sometimes you need to be a little bit stern to get things over with like nails but you can still do it in a calm and gentle way. Also when dealing with aggressive or difficult dogs, there's lots of tools that us groomers have that can be really helpful. So for example, we have muzzles that go over their mouth if they're trying to snap at us. 
There's something called a groomer's helper or you can make one yourself. This is where the noose, where it's usually attached above them, also gets attached to a bar right in front of them. So then their range of motion with their head, they can't move it as much to try to lunge and snap at you. Also, instead of a muzzle, you could use a cone. So literally just a cone that you get when your dog gets neutered or spayed that goes over their head. When you put that cone on them, they can't get to you. So sometimes that can be paired with a muzzle. Things like belly bands that go around the back of the dog to keep them kind of stable moving towards you. These tools are things that I use only if I absolutely have to, especially a muzzle or a cone. But in some cases, sometimes putting a muzzle on a dog completely calms them down. Now, I do not take on aggressive dogs. If a owner calls me to book in their dog and says that their dog is aggressive, I just politely turn them away. But if I'm in the middle of a groom and I can notice the dog's body language changing or they snap at me or they start growling, they only get one chance before they either get a muzzle or a cone and then I go from there. Because I cannot risk getting my hands or my arms injured and being out of work for weeks or a really bad bite or attack could leave you out of the dog grooming career or any career for life if it's bad enough. If they get muzzled and they are still being aggressive, they're biting me through the muzzle and they're being completely erratic and uncontrollable, even with me being calm and gentle and maybe a little bit stern, then that is when I will call it quits and I will no longer be grooming that dog. You always have to put yourself first, your safety and the dog's safety as well. In the past, I've struggled with people pleasing and trying to just get the job done just so that the owners are happy, but I no longer do that. It is not worth the risk to myself or the dog hurting itself. That being said, I work alone and I own my own business. So I am able to make that call of when I'm comfortable and when I'm not comfortable grooming a dog and I can either send them in half done, not done at all, or just completely turn them away. But if you work for somebody, you need to be working for a workplace that also has your safety in mind and isn't just about making a buck or people pleasing. There needs to be protocols in place that if you feel unsafe, you can turn away that dog. Now, luckily in salons, usually you're working with other employees, so maybe they can help hold a dog real quick while you do the nails, but you really need to put yourself first and your workplace, wherever that is, should also be putting your health and safety first. In the case that you have to turn away an aggressive dog that does really need a groom, say it's a little Shih Tzu that's never been groomed and it's very matted, so for its health, it needs to be groomed because those mats are pulling so hard on its skin and you feel horrible turning it away because it needs this groom, you still need to put your health and safety First, you can turn this dog away, but refer them to a vet where they can either give the dog medication or sedation before they do the shave for them. If you have to turn one of these dogs away and you're concerned about the person not actually taking them to the vet to get shaved and the help that they need, make sure that you get a wellness check with your local animal control to make sure they actually go through with the groom like they should and just don't feel bad for turning them away. I know that's easier said than done. We're all in the animal field because we love animals and we wanna care for them. But once again, you have to put yourself first because you never know what could happen. With all of this being said, I have had dogs that were a little bit on the aggressive side and I had to muzzle for most of the groom over time, getting used to me, realizing I'm okay, it's safe, I'm not hurting them, and I've been able to almost rehabilitate them, and they no longer need a muzzle. There's one dog that I groom, a little Yorkie. He used to, well, his very first groom, I sent him home and I was not able to finish the groom. I could only get his body done. He wouldn't let me touch his head at all or even his legs, and I only charged him like 20 bucks because I only felt, because I felt so bad but i decided i would try the dog again he wasn't actually trying to bite me i was able to get a muzzle on him when he was growling it was more so that he was moving and kind of thrashing around slowly over time i've been able to slowly get him used to me he realizes i'm not there to hurt him and now i groom him without a muzzle the only part that he absolutely hates is his nails but over time he's realized it's okay and the reason that he's like that is because he wasn't groomed as a puppy 
They did kind of home jobs here and there on him, but he had never been exposed to an actual full-on grooming experience. So sometimes dogs can be rehabilitated, but I encourage you to only take on dogs to rehabilitate that you are comfortable with and you feel that you are safe grooming them. Before you groom any dog, there should be questions that you ask if they have any history of being aggressive, what they are like at the groomers, etc. Most owners are honest, but sometimes they are not. But if the dog is bad, make sure you are the one that is honest. If you have to turn them away for whatever reason, just be honest and tell them exactly what happened. If the owners have a problem with it, there's really nothing you can do about it. You just need to be honest and honor yourself. Since most people that are asking these kind of questions are new to dog grooming and they're concerned about the injuries they could get from dogs, which is fair because aggressive dogs can do a lot of damage. So since these people are new, say you're a new groomer and you're really needing clientele, I strongly encourage you not to take on difficult dogs just because you need any type of clientele. Because once you start doing that dog, it's very difficult to get rid of them if they're not able to be rehabilitated or if you really just aren't comfortable. From the very beginning, please just turn away the dogs that you're not comfortable doing. I knew another groomer that got herself into kind of a sticky situation by doing this. In the beginning, she just accepted any dog that she could. Kind of word got around that she was good at doing aggressive dogs and now pretty much her full clientele is aggressive dogs that stress her out all day long. So if you're a new groomer, don't just take anybody. You should be a little bit more choosy about your clients. Now I know this can be difficult if you work for somebody, but once again, please look for an employer that looks out for your safety first before anything else. Okay, so that was a pretty long rant on how to deal with aggressive or difficult dogs, but let's move on to some of her other questions and hopefully I can kind of breeze through those a little bit quicker. So Natalie's next question are, how common are bites? This is a kind of difficult question to ask. I would be curious to put a poll on my Instagram and see how common or how often groomers that follow me have been bitten before, but I've actually only gotten actual punctures twice. Now when people ask me, have you ever been bitten before? I usually laugh and say no, because I'm really good at dodging. And that is true. I'm good at reading the dog's body language, so I am able to anticipate before they are going to bite me. Most dogs are going to warn you before they actually snap or bite with a growl, etc. Something that I mentioned in a previous video, I think it was my how to become a dog groomer or things you should know before becoming a dog groomer. I'll leave the I will leave the playlist down below where you can find those videos. But I talk about how I think it is very important for you to get experience with dogs, either in a kennel setting, working with dogs other than your own, or going to grooming school, hands-on experience with dogs other than your own, so you can learn their body language. I think that is the most important thing before you become a dog groomer, is to learn their body language so you know what to look for before they bite. Natalie's next question is what to do if you do notice their body language change. So as I mentioned before, if I notice a change in body language, I either muzzle or cone, or if I notice their body language changes, say only when I'm working on their tail, I take note of that, stop working on their tail, move on to a different part of their body, and like I mentioned before, I will try to do their tail last, and then maybe muzzle them as a precaution before I actually do their tail. Once I muzzle or cone a dog, I will attempt to continue. If they continue to display aggressive behavior that I am uncomfortable with, I think they might bite me through the muzzle and it's just making me feel uncomfortable, then I will stop the groom. There's nobody forcing you to finish a groom. If somebody is forcing you to finish a groom, please find a different workplace that cares about you but I will leave dogs half finished if I don't feel safe or I don't think they are safe either. And when you take that dog to the owner, you just have to be open and honest and owners should be understanding. If they're not, then honestly, this sounds kind of harsh, but that's their problem. There's other groomers that might be willing to do aggressive dogs, but not me. Especially because I have full clientele and I have a wait list, 
I have learned because I'm kind of in high demand that I'm gonna start taking applications for dogs, not just accepting every single dog that wants to be groomed by me. I will no longer be accepting aggressive or difficult dogs or dogs that I just don't feel comfortable grooming. And I think it should be that way for everybody. Everybody should have the right to say yes or no to whether they wanna be working on a certain dog for any reason at all. Something that I always preach when working with dogs or animals in any capacity, or just a good lesson in life in general, is just to listen to your intuition and your gut. If something feels off, if you don't feel comfortable, even if the owner doesn't make you feel comfortable, listen to your gut and just do what you think is right. No more people pleasing, put yourself first, it's hard when we're in a service industry and we're supposed to be trading a service for money, but please just put yourself first. It has taken me years to learn this and finally I think I'm getting it. Okay, so I think I've kind of covered all of Natalie's questions in my big long rant so far, but her last question that she adds in that isn't really about aggressive dogs, but I'm going to address anyways in this video is what is the most effective way I have found for advertising? Now for me, since I'm mobile, the van is literally a driving billboard. So people stop me all the time asking for business cards, taking pictures of the van, etc. So mobile kind of does your advertising for you. If you are in a salon, honestly, I would create a Facebook page for yourself, even if you don't own the salon, so people can scroll through my work. If they like it, maybe request me. I feel like Facebook is a great way to get your name out there. You can post in dog pages or your city's page about your services. And also I find once you start getting clients, word of mouth is very popular. If you're a good groomer, you love what you do, and your clients can tell that, they're going to refer your family and friends to them. Honestly, when building your clientele, don't be worried about your skill. That will get better and better over time. But the owners that love their pets will really be able to tell when you put in the extra care and attention and you're putting your heart into your work. In the beginning, it took me a long time to groom a dog. Maybe it didn't look perfect, but I was able to build up my clientele just by having the right intentions. Owners should be choosing the groomers that they use, also by their intuition, who they trust. And we are dealing with people's furry little babies. So honestly, your intention and your care is everything, I believe, over your skill. Over time, you are gonna get better, so don't worry. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching today, and thank you again, Natalie, for your question. If any of you guys have any questions about grooming, please leave them down below, or you can send me a DM on Instagram, as I would love to answer more in videos. If you haven't already, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below, as I've been trying my best to upload new videos every single week. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.